Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and more defence witnesses in the KSC Anthony trial and the next one is Yuri Melic again. He was the lead detective in this case and he executed several warrants in the Anthony's home. The first one was in August 2008 and Yuri is asked if he found any papers in the home that related to chloroform which he says he didn't nor did he find any containers that contained chloroform nor, or rags or receipts for the purchase of it or chemistry kits that could have been used to make chloroform. The second search warrant was carried out on the 11th of December 2008. No receipts were found there, no containers or rags or chemistry kits etc. Um, Yuri is now shown the search warrant to check what the scope was for that those warrants to see if the search for chloroform was on there and the search warrant did ask for them to search for such items. The third warrant was on December the 20th um, 2008 and the scope of this warrant did not include anything to do with chloroform. They had no reason to put it into the scope because they had looked previously. Through the entire time of this case, they never found any chloroform in the Anthony home. So the cross-examination. When the first warrant was carried out, they had not yet got the results back that indicated possible use of chloroform. They found out at the end of August, beginning of September, by which point Casey was out of jail. Um, she was out until October. So there we go for that one. The next witness is Dr. Marcus Wise. Um, he's a research scientist at Oak Ridge National Laboratory and his specialty is analytical chemistry. He's been at Oak Ridge for almost 27 years. So this is the first time he's ever testified in court um, and he says he has not worked personally in a forensics lab and he really doesn't know much about the protocols in a forensic lab. So in his lab, he doesn't have those strict protocols they do. So I kind of started thinking here, I think I know which route Baez is going down. Um, his main goal in his job is to expand, wow. <laughs> expand the boundaries of science and he is aware of possible contamination. He was given items to test in this case um, by Arpad Vass, as Arpad's office was near his. He used a gas chromatograph mass spectrometer. He ran a qualitative analysis, which remember, it will tell you what is in the sample, but not how much. And at that point, they did not discuss a quantitative analysis. The results showed a peak and he follows that up by saying a significant peak. He did decide that a quantitative analysis wouldn't be worth doing because it wouldn't show anything. If they had done one, it would have been a meaningless number because chloroform is a volatile chemical, which means it evaporates easily. Therefore, the test wouldn't have given a proper number for the amount that may have been there originally. I hope that made sense. It made sense when I was typing it up. I don't know if it made sense coming out of my mouth. And the other reason was because he didn't know all the history of it, like how long it had been there, the temperatures, etc. They did not have any standard protocols in his lab that he that say his equipment equipment must be absolutely clean because in one of his reports he had put a note for himself saying a piece of equipment was reasonably clean and he says that what was not his primary goal so this isn't, this isn't going well at all so in one of the air samples that he was testing um, it was using a triple absorbent trap um, and there was a large benzene peak which meant it had been contaminated and Marcus doesn't know how it got there. Marcus explains what a triple absorbent trap is. So, 
it has a three inch long stainless steel tube about a quarter of an inch in diameter. This is packed with a material that is similar to activated carbon. This is like, this acts like a chemical sponge which, which soaks up um, constituents out of the air so they can be concentrated and then taken out of the sponge and injected into the gas chromatograph mass spectrometer. So Marcus did not ask any other chemist to verify his results. So like in forensic labs, you know, they are peer reviewed. So now Baez is picking out every single error Marcus made during his tests and rightly so and points out that his lab is not a forensic lab and therefore doesn't have the strict protocols of a forensic lab. I mean, like I said, you can see Byers's point. It doesn't look good because going through all his reports and all the notes he made to himself about errors that were made, there was a lot. So we move on to the cross-examination and the amount of chloroform that he found was unusual to him also and raised questions in his mind. He did look at some safety data sheets for car products and cleaners to see where this amount of chloroform could have come from. He was not able, able to find anything, um, but he does say he didn't do an extensive search on this. So the notes he made in his report of all the errors that occurred was to make sure he could have a complete record of anything that was in any way out of the ordinary when Marcus was running in the tests. But it doesn't look good because, you know, in a case like this where, you know, doing tests and not making sure things are clean and then having contamination, not good. So end of that testimony. And I will be back with more. So until then, bye for now.